So this is just a quick supplement on my previous video regarding dynamic foveated rendering on the Pimax Crystal. And I wanted to just add this in there because I wasn't particularly happy with my explanation on that video. Uh, with the implementation of all these different kinds of uh, dynamic foveated rendering on the Pimax Crystal. And the reason for that is because I'm confused myself about all these different impl implementations. I did mention in that video that I'm basically doing trial and error on all of these different titles to see if I can get it working. And somebody did mention actually it was a little bit difficult to follow that video and I don't disagree, it was. And watching it back, I wish I could you know, do it a little bit better, have some notes to follow rather than just giving a stream of thought. But the clarification I want to make is really based on one comment by Omni Whatever, and I'll put a link into their uh, to their channel in the description to this video because they have been a beta tester, I believe, of the Pimax Crystal, and they've tested quite a few different titles on uh, dynamic foveated rendering with that headset, and they seem to have quite a lot of knowledge about it. And there's some really great videos on that channel, um, which will help anybody that is getting a Pimax Crystal. But really, the root of the clarification that Omni Whatever posted in the comment that they put in my last video is really down to how it is implemented in different ways. And I think there's still a little bit of confusion around this, but basically the Pimax DFR integration will work with any open VR title. That's why I could get it to work perfectly fine with Elite Dangerous and with Aircar as well. Um, I did try it in Aircar and that, that works perfectly fine. So you can get sort of native dynamic foveated rendering within both of those titles no problem and it should work I believe with any open VR title. When I tried it with Microsoft Flight Simulator and I mentioned that it had a slightly different integration by going through um, OpenXR Toolkit and the clarification again which uh, Omni Whatever provided to me with this is that when it does it that way there is no way to do sort of native DFR through OpenXR Toolkit, but what it does do is then use the NVIDIA VRS implementation for dynamic foveated rendering. So you're not really using the Pimax software at all, you're using the NVIDIA implementation um, of dynamic foveated rendering and OpenXR is using that to apply it to whatever you're playing in um, in OpenXR native titles like Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that's why the actual output of this dynamic foveated rendering works differently. It's still a little bit confusing and I'm working my way through. I hope you'll all bear with me with regards to this because I'm a noob when it comes to eye tracking and dynamic foveated rendering. I've not really had a headset that does this kind of stuff before so I'm, I'm getting my head around it but I'm learning a little bit each day and once again I will recommend you go over to Omni Whatever's uh, channel in order to get a little bit more perspective on this and also just some general thoughts on the Pimax Crystal because there's a lot that they say with regards to resolving bugs and these bugs are being updated all the time by the way this is the thing with Pimax are working really hard behind the scenes in order to get any bugs that people are having with the crystal resolved by the time they get it there's still things that need to be worked out um and again, it's all very much up in the air. It does very much feel like a little bit of a beta release, but I can't deny that I'm having a great time with my crystal. So I'll, I'll keep doing that. And I'll keep reporting on this as well because I'm having a great time with it. I'm having a great time learning about dynamic foveated rendering because I think it's going to have a really big value to a lot of people, especially if you're into sim gaming and stuff. If you are trying to play these titles which are very, very demanding. Sim gaming, Microsoft Flight Simulator and, and races and stuff are very demanding on your PC. So if you can implement some kind of dynamic foveated rendering to take the load off, no matter how small that improvement is, then I think it's worthwhile. Um, I'm very interested in it. I'm going to keep looking into it and hopefully learn a bit more as we go. But um, yeah, I'll end it there on this video. Just a very quick, you know, supplement to my previous one on DFR. And next time I'll, I'll probably try to make some notes to make myself a little bit clearer in uh, my videos regarding stuff that I'm not actually that clear on. So um, yeah, I'll leave it there. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>